Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the John Deere Classic from a DraftKings perspective for this weekend for True DFS. Uh, for those of you that are not subscribers, I encourage you to get in there. Um, you get access not only to these videos, obviously, but also some very proprietary projection models, uh, access to other premium content, and things like that. So if you're uh, if you're uh, if you're freeloading and just watching this for free, uh, I do encourage you to kind of get in there. But uh, in any case, we're coming off of some majors. Uh, we were off the US Open and then the Travelers last week. And now we have this field that is just not what we're used to. Um, but I think from a GPP perspective and a DraftKings perspective in general, these slates are awesome. And the reason why is, well, just take a look at the pricing here. And I just wanna just kind of, uh, I don't wanna say this in a sarcastic way. So let me just say, directly these guys that are above 10k we're used to seeing them in the 7500 range you know web hadwin the gala and and uh and day and then you look at these guys in the 9k range you know where we're used to seeing them in the 7500 range and then you look at these 8k guys you know, brandon todd cam davis lucas glover you know where we're used to seeing them in the 7500 range and then you get down to these guys in the 7500 range and you know where we're used to seeing them basically in the 7500 range so what you're what you have here is a collection of 7500 dollars golfers some of which are priced at 10k some of which are priced at 9k some of which are priced at 8k and some of which are priced at 7500 um so this is a slate for let's listen for my money i mean i'm, I'm kind of a projection guy so i will kind of go with these but when I look at some of the projection models, I don't want to say they're being disingenuous, but I will say that they're overstating some of these, some of the prospects of these 10K guys just because they're 10K. I mean, I really believe that. Um, but it, it, and the, the reason why these guys are 10K is when you make a slate like this, you just have to have some guys above 10K. Um, you, you have to be able to create, if you're doing an algorithm with pricing models, to, to have 50,000 be spread out among golfers and have it not be a case where everybody's leaving 3,000 on the table, right? Um, but the, the reality is, is that there's not a lot of difference between the 10-6 guy, the 10-4 guy, and the 7,500 guy on a slate like this. There just isn't. Now you 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 add on to that the fact that this is an extremely easy course. Okay. The course that they're on, I'm gonna predict that the winner is at least 25 under. I mean, it's possible you get, I don't know, 30 unders are off, but there's there's no way that the winner is less than 20 under. And this field, not this field, this course is just it's just they, there's almost no penalties <laughs> like like if you if you miss the fairway no problem if you miss the green no problem it is going to be a complete birdie fest and when you put a birdie fest out there that creates even more variance because what happens is is even if you were a better golfer i mean if you ask the better golfers out there you know what they're going to say they're going to say you know what give me the hardest course because that's the way i can you know uh show my skills over some of these guys who are quite, aren't quite as good, but you make a birdie fest out there. You know what I mean? It, it, you, it really comes down to sort of luck, right? The, the question of who's going to make the 10 footer, you know, who's going to, uh, who's going to stick it to three feet as opposed to nine feet from where everybody's going to be located because you, being a long hitter isn't really going to help you all that much, you know? So it's just, I don't want to say it's going to be an all luck fest, but you're, you're going to have to be somewhat fortunate <laughs> that, that, that you make those putts and that you stick it closer than the next guy. So you're going to have a field that number one is probably mispriced. Um, and also you'll have just incredible variance because of just the way the scoring is going to just pan out. Right. So I'm going to go through the tiers and, 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 and such like normal, but I have a very, uh, I have a very set way of the way I'm going to play this, 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 uh, this slate. And we're going to get to that kind of at the end, you're going to have to wait for that. Um, there are a couple of guys that I do want to highlight as just kind of just for fun, uh, because I, I do like to, 
I do like to see how these guys start to project and their momentum and things like that. Um, but let's just look at the top. So in the 10K range, you have Webb, Simpson, uh, Hadwin, Figala, and Day. And as I said, I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, I mean, when I rate these guys by fantasy points, yeah, I mean, they're, they're probably a little, they're, they're, they're better, but not by that much, you know, especially like Figala and Day. I mean, I have them, I mean, at most like a point or two better than these 8K guys. Um, and, and, and quite honestly, I, I feel as though a lot of these projections are being disingenuous. I mean, you think about this, like what was, let's, let's look at Figala for a second. Well, dude, I, I mean, guys, I love Figala, right? I think he's, he's, he's good for the game. He's good for everything. It doesn't actually have his price here for some reason. Um, where would that be? I don't even know. But this is seven, it's got 7,500 every week. You know, why is he better than these other guys that are 7,500 every week? Just because he had two, two good rounds? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, for me, playing a guy like that off of 16% ownership off of a big tournament like that, I mean, no thanks. You know, um, Webb Simpson, at least, I mean, he's projecting to be the best, the best. Uh, as far as median fantasy points goes, but not by a lot. I mean, I have him three points better than Hadwin and five points better over a whole bunch of other guys. And when you think of Webb, you don't think of that guy who's going to just, just put up 25 to 30 under, you know, you think of him as that consistent dude who's going to, you know, if you want to play Webb to make top 10 here, 15, sure, go for it. But I don't know. It just doesn't seem as though, he's the type of guy I want to play in this type of field at 10, six, you know, I just don't think he's that much better than anybody. I mean, he's been, he's been 7,500 like everybody else, you know, um, he has that name that, you know, harkens back to these, you know, lat two years ago when he was much better, but he had the neck injury and he's looking, listen, he has been better in the last couple of weeks, but 10, six for him. I mean, I don't know. And, and then you go down to Hadwin day, I just don't feel these guys are that much better than anybody below them. I really don't. Um, but if you did want to, you know, uh, you know, if you wanted me to rank these guys, I do have, um, what you call it? I do have Web rated like the quote unquote best, and then Hadwin. But if you're going to rate these guys by point per dollar or value or anything like that, like I have Web. If you look at my stuff, he's like 20, 20 seconds. You know what I mean? And he's the top of the 10K range. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be stepping over anybody to play him or anybody in this 10K range, honestly. Um, let's go down to the 9K range. Um, and this is where I'm going to, well, there's what, four guys? But I do want to talk about all of them. Um, starting with Charles Howell. Charles Howell, for those of you who have been following my, my, my stuff, I mean, I've been kind of recommending him on and off for a year now. I mean, he just has, you know, baseball, they talk about internal numbers and internal stats and things like that. He's been showing signs uh, in kind of the hidden data that he's just kind of better than his results. And these, this kind of data has been kind of picking up momentum over the last couple of, you know, couple of, you know, six, nine months. And I will say this, that he gave a couple of people a scare in the last couple of weeks. He was really doing well the first day or two, and then he kind of faded. Um. And I, in my experience doing this, uh, you keep playing these guys and they will pop. So I do have Howell as, as by far, I'm my favorite in the 9K range. Okay. And I actually have him rated fifth overall. So uh, I, I think that he's a very, very strong player. I think he's underrated. Um, nobody really knows who he is. Nobody really likes to play him. He doesn't, because you want to know why? Because he hasn't really done anything. You know what I mean? Like, if you played him in DFS, I mean, is there any time, even in the past full year? Well, yeah, there's one. At the Valero Open, that's really the only time where you're going to be fist pumping and saying, I played Charles Howell. I'm the man. You know what I mean? Or I'm, I'm the lady, whatever. Um, maybe the RSM Classic, but so, so a guy like this, and he doesn't really ever get owned that much. So a guy like this is just kind of off the radar. Um, 
So if you're going to play single entry or something like that, I think this is I think this is a good place to start. Is 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 Charles Howell um, for all those reasons? I just think he's going to be under owned for I mean forever. You know what I mean? Until he wins, you know, and then then he'll be over. But I I think he's going to be under under owned while he's continuing to exhibit this good form. Uh, next guy I have down the list is Bizayden Hoot. And even him, he's all the way down at the 18th um, on my, my value rankings. Um, but he is the next guy. Let's, let's, let's build something here. Let's put Howell in just for the hell of it. Um, but as I said, none of these 9K guys, I mean, aside from even those two, really just do much for me with respect to relative value over everybody else. You're going to get a lot of, you know, maybe ownership out of Denny McCarthy, Maverick Neely, McNeely. You wonder why they're both kind of like hot names, you know, Mc, Mc, McCarthy's got a good, he's got a, got a good nickname, McPutts, right? Because he likes to, he always makes putts. He's one of, he is a really, really great putter. And on a course like this, as I mentioned at the, at the intro, I mean, you're going to have to make some. I mean, the Maverick McNeely, I mean, he's got a name, he's young, everybody likes him. You know, he's a model darling every freaking week. But this particular week, I mean, He's not really showing that he's that much better than guys below him. And that's the best way I can describe this. Um, so while the 9K guys are fine, um, I think I would, I would say limited, but I would just make sure that Charles Howell, you get more than the others. Okay. When we get into the 8Ks and then into the 7Ks, th then we're really starting to get into the guys that I think you're supposed to play. Um and we'll get into lineup construction as we kind of get to the end of this. Because again, I mean, now you're getting the, at least the, the price discounts over some of these other dudes. Like I have my best, oh, best value in the 8K range and I haven't rated third overall is going to be uh, JT Poston. Um, he, I'm hoping that people don't play him because he had sort of a ceiling performance in his last event. But I don't think I'm going to get that lucky. Um, I think they are going to play him. It's it's a really nice course for him as well. Um, you, he doesn't really need to be that long. He just needs to score, and he can do that. So I do have him as the top-rated AK guy. Uh, then I have a couple of others. I'll just kind of throw – actually, I have like four or five others. So I'll just I'll throw them all in here. We have Patrick Rogers, 8,800. Then we have Cam Davis at 8,400. We have Lucas Glover at 8,300. And then we have Hardy at 8,700. Those are, and then Adam Long. So these are the guys in the 8K range that they all look pretty good. The one guy who you're going to get ownership to, which I'm just not going to play because of that, is going to be uh, Brendan Todd. And Brendan Todd, this play is just too cute. You know, like when you see, uh, a course where you don't need to be that long and you can make, you need to make putts immediately. People say, just jam Brandon Todd. You know, listen, life's not that easy. You know, you still have to, you still have to get it close to the hole and you still have to make the putts. Right. So uh, I don't, I don't think this is a good play. I don't think it's a good play at high ownership. And this would be something I would fade uh, in single and triple entry. Um, if you, you know, if you got to it in MME along with some other low owned plays and we'll get to construction and very, very shortly, I think that's okay. But uh, if you were just hand building, I would, I would not play Brandon Todd. Um, and if I didn't go over anybody else in the AK, it's just because they're just not making it for me. So CT Pan, not really. Lance Griffin, not really. Stallings, not really. Um, and then you get into the 7K range. And, and this is where, I mean, like I said, these guys are priced the same as they always are. There, these guys just did not get the same 1500 to 2k bump that these the guys we just went through got. So, naturally, I would imagine these guys are all extremely mispriced. Either, well, you can look at another way either they're mispriced, or the 9k guys are mispriced, or the 10k guys are mispriced, or both. But the 7500 guys, at least I know, are fairly priced. You know what I mean? It's possible they're fairly priced and everybody else is overpriced which is that means the same thing. I mean, you're just supposed to be playing these guys. So I'm, I'm going to read some names off. And the one guy that I'm just going to struggle with um, is the guy I have ranked overall. And that is going to be Taylor Pendrick. And the reason why I struggle with this, it's the, it's the combination of 
of, of, of projection versus, versus narrative and reality. So he rates to be the top overall value, but he's been gone for three, three and a half, four months with a cracked rib. Okay. Do you want to play him off of the four month layoff? Considering also that he, he dropped out of the Canadian open. I mean, that's how much hurt he, that's how hurt he might be still. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what to do. Um, I'm probably going to end up playing them. Then the other guys, I will just kind of rattle off, you know, and these guys are all playable. Um, in no, I'm going to say no particular. I just have them ranked. I have Gim ranked first. Then I have um, Adam Svensson rated second. Then I have Kevin Streelman rated third. And then I have uh, Mark Hubbard rated fourth and all these guys I have in kind of like my top 10. And then I'll, I'll throw some others out there. Just, I can't put them all in here. Uh, you have John Ha, Alex Smalley, Grillo, Laird, Lipsky. Um, all these guys are, are totally in play. Look undervalued might end up being on their own. Not even sure. Um, but I think these are the guys that you want to play. Um, under 6k is there even any number under 6k uh, yeah there there is but um i don't really i'm, I'm not getting to anybody under 6 7k at all um I, the the top guy i have is lee hodges but he's all the way rated 39th and, and that's not going to do it for me um there's just so many guys that that are above him a little bit that i think are just much better um Okay, so what do you do? You know, so so what do you do here? I mean, if you think that the seventy five hundred guy guys are just as good as the nine Ks or the ten Ks or at least close to it, I mean, what do you do? I mean, if you run optimals, I'll tell you what you'll end up getting, right? Um, you, you will end up getting some Webb Simpson, right? You'll end up getting some of these guys because um, you know, they do project to be a little bit better, right? Um, what I would honestly recommend in a slate like this, and, and this is whatever I would, I would demand to leave money on the table that, that would be, that would be my recommendation is, is I would, I would, whether using Saber Sim or, or wrote or, or HQ or whatever it is, I would leave at least a thousand on the table. I would. Um, because you see these guys like Spence and I see him at 17% ownership, right? You see Post at 13% ownership. I see Howell at 13%. I see Patrick Rogers, 30, 15%. Cam Davis, 15, 12, you know, 14, 10. But what is the ownership of lineups going to look like that have, that have all these guys who are good plays that are leaving 1500 on the table? Right. L lineups are, are, you know, ownership is is yes, it starts with the individual players. But in the end, you know, it, it, it matters how popular your entire lineup is. Um, and I, I re was reminded of this when I was doing my MMA uh, this past week. I was leaving money on the table in MMA. And there was at one point during the card after about six or seven you know, of the, of the 12 fights where I was in first place by myself okay and it was and you think about this to have a unique lineup and a 12 12 fight mma slate is 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 really rare in general and i was literally in first place and i just needed a couple of fights to bust near the end and i would have gotten there it, it turns out i didn't but the point is the reason why i was unique is that the lineup had left money on the table i took good plays but just put them all together and didn't feel the need to say, boy, I, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm going to believe that all of a sudden Thigala is a 10K player as opposed to 7,500. For, for some reason, I'm, I'm going to now believe that Hadwin, all these guys are like huge 10K players. Um, for me, I am going to, um, and I think people are going to do something like that. Like, I think people are going to, to take the 10Ks out. Um, Although I do see Webb Simpson 25, 30% owned somehow. 
what they're probably going to do is take is 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 play web with a bunch of seven Ks. But I don't know how many lineup bills there are going to be that leave money on the table. And I believe that that's what I'm going to end up doing. Um, and it was what I recommend if you're playing GPPs, MME type stuff that I would recommend doing. If you were going to play single entry or whatever it is, and you weren't as concerned about being different, as concerned about, about whatever, then I would go back to my, my core plays, which I will review. Okay. Um, all right. So instead of doing the contest, like who do I think is going to win the tournament? I'm, I'm going to talk about ranges. Um, I really, I don't know who's going to win the tournament. Uh, I'm not even going to guess. I don't think I'm playing anybody in the money line. Actually, I might. I might take a shot at somebody 50 to 1 or 100 to 1. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe post that in Discord. My top play in the 10K range is nobody. I mean, really. Um, I, I don't want to play anybody. In there. Top play in the 9K range is going to be Charles Howell. I talked about that extensively. Uh, the 8K range, my top play is going to be JT Poston. Um, there are others, you know, Patrick Rogers, good, Cam Davis, Lucas Glover, Nick Hart. We talked about all these guys. And in the 7K range, I, I almost don't want to be that guy that gives out one top play in this range only because I really believe that there's a lot of them that are close. Let, let me identify at least two guys that are seem to be low owned. Uh, I'll, I'll identify five. How about that? So let's, let's get rid of, of, of this for a second. The five guys that I have, that I think are going to be low owned or at least look like they're going to be lower owned. And when I say low, I mean under 10%. It would be Doug Gim. It would be, uh, no, Svensson Chalk. It would be Kevin Streelman. It would be, I know, Cam Davis. Oh, we talked about him. He's chalky, 8K. Hubbard, a little too chalky. We would, Smalley, Amen, uh, Grillo, all these guys. Um, and who else? Uh, Martin Laird. He's almost, actually, he's be a little higher on, like Lipsky, something like that, you know. Um, and, um, yeah, th those are my top guys in the range. So, and really nothing under 6K. So, so 7K, so Lee Hodges is whatever. So really, I, I really do believe that this is a, an NME slate. Well, actually, let's do it. You want to build a lineup here? Let's, 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 we can't build the whole lineup, but so if you play Howell and then you play Poston and then let's say, you know, you, you want to play mm, Patrick Rogers. Rogers is a good play. And then you play one of the AKs, maybe Cam Davis. Uh, Davis is a lot of volatility, but we'll put him in here. And then take your pick of the two seven Ks. I mean, this is, this is, you want to line up? This is a lot. You know what I mean? Um, so, That'll do it. Uh, I'm going to update ownerships maybe a little bit later tonight. Uh, if I don't, it's because of internet's bad. So I'm not going to be, be home, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. In, as far as GPPs, I'm going to leave money on the table by force. And I already discussed who I'd be playing in single and three max. Uh, good luck, everybody. And uh, as Mr. Rody would say, let's get it.